The helical sweep feature is most often used to create springs and threads. To start the feature, go to the Sweep dropdown and then choose Helical Sweep. And we get the dashboard open at the top of the screen. I'll go to the References tab. The first thing that you need to define is the sweep profile, or in other words, its shape. And you can select a pre-existing sketch, or you can create the sketch within the helical sweep feature itself. I'm going to sketch on the datum plane called Front. Let's click the Sketch button to go into Sketch Mode, and turn off my datum plane visibility, and go to the Sketch View. The first thing that I'm going to put in here is going to be a geometry center line. And I'm going to put that right at the intersection of my default datums and make it vertical. That's going to be the axis of revolution for my helical sweep by default. And for the profile, I'm just going to start off with a straight line to begin with. Later on, I'll change it and make it a little more complicated. And I'm going to have this start with a length of 5 and it automatically gives you a diameter dimension let's use a diameter of 1 so I'm happy with my profile I'll right mouse click and hold to get to the check mark to exit out of sketch mode and you'll notice that Creole parametric automatically suggests a pitch to me and it uses a pitch that would give you 10 coils along the length of the feature. In other words, since I have a length of 5, it gave me a pitch of 0.5. Next up, we need to define the shape that we are going to sweep around our feature. To do that, we could use the Edit Sketch button, and you get some sketch references located at the beginning of your sweep feature. And I'm just going to create a circle and initially, let's start off with a value of 0.25. I'll right click again to use the check mark to get out of sketch mode. And there you see a preview of the feature. Let's talk about a few of the different options from the dashboard. You could generate this as a non solid feature or a surface. And if you do that, you have the ability to cap the end so it looks like an enclosed volume, even though it'll be hollow on the inside. And if the model already has mass, you could use this as a cut instead. Let's hit the check mark, and I want to show you that. So here is my helical sweep being generated as a solid. I'm going to resume this extrude in the model tree. And now when I edit definition of the helical sweep, for some reason, the remove material button on the dashboard can be grayed out, but that's no problem. You can right mouse click and hold and choose remove material. And let's hit the check mark. And now you can see how this sort of gives me the threads along the outside of the part. Okay, let me edit definition. I want that to not remove material. So let's right click and uncheck the option. And I'm going to suppress extrude one again to show you some of the other different options in the helical sweep feature okay uh, from the dashboard you could thicken this feature just like you could with an extrude or a revolve here's the value for changing the pitch we'll take a look at variable pitch in a moment and also you can choose whether you want this to be going in the left hand direction or the right hand direction the default is the right hand direction we already took a look at the references tab this is where you have the ability to change the profile flip the direction as well here it's using the internal center line that i sketched as the axis of revolution and you can choose some other reference like a datum axis in your model you also have section orientation control so right now the section is being oriented to go through the axis of revolution and so you can see that it's sort of parallel to the axis of revolution instead of being through the axis of revolution you can you can choose normal to trajectory and when i did that you might have noticed that the orientation on the end changed a little bit because now it's keeping the section in this case a circle normal to the sweeps trajectory as it moves along the feature 
Okay, now let's take a look at pitch. So you can have a variable pitch along the length of your feature. And if I click the add pitch button, now I can have a different pitch at the start and the end. So maybe at the start, I'm gonna use a value of 0.5, and at the end, I'll use a value of one. And you can see in the preview how it's going to interpolate from that smaller pitch value to a larger pitch value. You can also add additional location points along the length of your feature for changing the pitch. And let me show you how to do that. I'm gonna go back to the References tab and click the Edit button to change the shape of my sketch. Let's go back to the Sketch View. And right now, it's just a straight line. Let's delete that. And for my new shape, I'm just gonna construct some geometry. Let's do three lines. And I'm gonna have it snap in over here. All right, so I get a bunch of different dimensions on the computer screen. First thing I want, I'm gonna make the two angled lines have an equal length. And let's create some dimensions. I wanna control the overall height of the feature. It's gonna be a height of six this time. And let's control the length of this straight line segment. I'm gonna give that a value of two. And let's use a big diameter in the middle of four. And the diameter on the outside is 1.6. And by the way, Creo Parametric is automatically suggesting diameter dimensions to me. If you don't get these diameter dimensions, the way that you create them is by getting by clicking on the dimension icon, and you're going to do three alternating left mouse clicks, either starting on the center line or the entity that you want to dimension. So I can click left, 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 and then middle mouse button. And there I have my diameter dimension. Let's change that to a value of two. And before I jump out of sketch mode, I'm going to drop a couple of sketch points on my vertices. And that'll enable me to use those as different locations for changing the pitch of the feature. Sometimes you can use vertices, sometimes Creo can be a little finicky when you're trying to select them. So that's why I like to make sure that I have those geometry points or those sketch points in my sketch to use. So now when I go to the pitch tab, let's add pitch and you can use a value for locating where it's going to be. If I go to the drop down list, instead of using value, you could use length ratio or reference. In reference, now I can select that point. And let's add in another pitch value. And let's also go by reference, and I'll select the other location. And now I can say, hey, let's have a pitch of 0.5 at the two ends. And in the middle, I'm going to have pitch values of 1 and 1. So there we have big pitch right there in the middle. Okay, so that's how you can have the variable pitch. Now let's take a look at the options tab. And on the options tab over here, earlier, earlier I had showed you that you can cap the ends if you're creating this as a surface feature, but you also have the ability to make this sort of like a variable helical sweep by changing the section along the length of the feature. And before I do that, I'm gonna create a datum graph that I'm going to use to drive the diameter of my section. So let's hit the check mark. And to create a datum graph, we're going to go to the datum drop down menu and choose graph. And I'm just going to take the default name graph underscore one. And to create a datum graph, you need to drop in a coordinate system that is a requirement. And it really helps to throw in a couple center lines to visualize your x and y axes. And I'm going to sketch what I want to use as my diameter for my feature. And just like before, let's say I want to 
make sure that these two segments are the same length and let's create some dimensions my overall length here should be a value of six oops that doesn't like that let's change this one first let's change that to two and now I should be able to change this to six and let's see I want a dimension to control this height over here and so the pitch that I want at the beginning I want to have a value of let's use excuse me not the pitch this is to control the diameter of my circle let's use a value of 0.25 on the ends let me hit the undo button sometimes your flat your sketch flip-flops in ways that you don't want uh, you can control that let me see let's put in a horizontal constraint between there and there and let me use modify to change this and this dimension over here turn off the regeneration let's try let's see that one we're going to use 0.25 this one over here one and hit the OK button there we go uh, again if your sketch ever flip-flops in ways that you don't want that's an excellent use of the modify uh, button to change your different dimensions and turn off the regeneration or lock the scale all right let's hit the check mark to get out of sketch mode and in order to use this graph in the helical sweep it's got to exist hold on a second it's having trouble reordering with that in there so let me just go and come here drag up there we go now let's suppress that okay so I have the graph in the model let's edit definition of our helical sweep and we'll click on the sketch button on the dashboard and to get into relations you can choose tools and then relations but this is an excellent command to have in your quick access toolbar I'm in my relations dialog box a lot and so it changes the name of the dimension uh, to, excuse me the dimension from its numerical form to its symbolic form and now if I select the dimension, it automatically pastes it in my editing window. And I'm going to use the eval graph function to say, go to the graph called graph underscore one and extract the height value for the tragpar parameter. And tragpar has a value of zero at the beginning of your trajectory and one at the end if you recall my graph I made it a length of six so I'm gonna to have to multiply trash part times six and I always like to verify whether I wrote my relations correctly yay let's click the OK button and OK out of here so now if I go back to my sketch tab we can click OK out of here and you see wow look how big the pitch gets or the diameter gets along with the pitch over at the end and if I hit the check mark there you can see that we have our big wide value hey let's go and edit definition of the graph and let's change this from 1 to 0.75 and hit the check mark now at this point you would think that you could click the regenerate button and your helical sweep would update for some reason it doesn't so what you can do instead is edit definition of your helical sweep and then it'll update to the new graph values and then hit the check mark and there we have our model updated with changes to our datum graph I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolewindchill.com. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.